All right, so we're gonna pop the hood here. Whoa, hold up, you see that? So you got a bigger lawn and you wanna spend less time mowing it. Can this PowerSmart 26 inch, 80 volt battery powered three in one lawn mower get the job done? Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. Full transparency here, after a few emails with PowerSmart, they sent some lawnmowers my way. They agreed to me giving them authentic and honest reviews. And in this video, I'll be reviewing this 80 volt, 26 inch mowing monster. The model number is PS76826 SRB, and it is made in China. We're gonna have to cut her open. Hold up. In the unlikely event that this unit needs to be returned for service, original packaging is required, save the box. Be careful opening these up because sometimes there is a lawnmower bag right on the top. So you wanna pop this up a little bit and then slice. See, what I tell you, there's a lot of mower in there. There's our lawnmower bag. That's a pretty big bag. It's not so much wide, it's more so long. So the first thing I wanna get at here is the charging dock and the battery. This is our charging dock, come on. Out you come. There we go, 80 volt charging dock. And let's get this battery. These things are always so heavy. Holy smokes. Let's see how much juice we got. 50%, not bad. Let's give this baby a charge. So you can kind of hear this thing making some noise right now. It's going wah. That's the fan inside keeping this baby cool. We're gonna leave this here on the charging dock while I finish unboxing the rest of the mower. Here's our instruction manual with our much needed keys, our side discharge chute. Before I go any further, this mower comes with a three year warranty. And as I mentioned earlier, you wanna save your box. I normally do all my own repairs on my machines. I'm not afraid to cut this box open. I'm gonna cut these edges up so I can get it out. Cut the side, come on, there we go. Come on, fold her down. I just noticed something. Check this out. This is where the battery and the charging dock were sitting. If we look here, these little plastic tabs are cracking off. These are for your cables. Not really a big deal, but if I wanted to move something around, that might be necessary. Got this little plastic tab that keeps this whole little metal pin in line. If I go over here, look at this little plastic tab, it's broken off. This guy shifted up. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's cracked. Once we get that clamp in position, that part might be okay. Must have gotten roughed up and shipping pretty good. All right, let's pull this baby out. There we go. Now let's bring these handlebars into position. We're gonna raise them up. All right, let me bring you in here. These handlebars have three positions. If you see these tiny little black notches, you have one little metal notch. You're gonna line these up. And on the very first setting, that seems to be about the right height with the handlebars. Make sure your cords aren't in the way and simply clamp it down. Now to raise the handlebars up the rest of the way, we're gonna open these up, slide it up. And from here, line up the holes all the way through and lock it in place. Same thing over here. Lock it in place. Now that the handlebars are all set up, we're gonna lift the trunk flap, open that up, and you'll see two little notches for the bag to just drop right in. Forms a pretty nice seal right there. And for our last step, we're gonna insert our side discharge. From here, we have these hooks on the top, and we're just gonna hook them right underneath that metal bar, just like so, drop it into place, flap down, and you're all good to go. 26 inches wide, all set up, all assembled, and ready to rock. I'll tell you what, this unit does look pretty tough. Kind of reminds me of a football player with the helmet here in the middle and these big old shoulder pads here on the sides. Let's get the battery in it. All right, so we're gonna pop the hood here. Whoa, hold up. You see that? One slide pin here, missing one here. Completely gone. This thing wobbles like crazy. Look at that. We'll tend to that later. Here's our key, here's our slot. We need this in order to get this mower started. We're gonna push it all the way in until we hear a click. From here, we're gonna take our battery. We're gonna drop it right in until you hear that lock. And this plastic tab here should be up. That means the battery is fully against those metal prongs in the back. Hood down and we're good to go. Now she's all set up and help set this video up for success with the YouTube algorithm. Would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button down below? Thank you very much. Here's all the stats on this mower now. This mower weighs about 76 pounds. The dual blade design gives you a 26 inch cutting width and these two blades do not interfere with each other as they spin. The 80 volt six amp hour battery runs for approximately 50 minutes and takes approximately 90 minutes to fully charge. The brushless motor on top is quiet and maintenance free. And if the day is getting away from you, you can even mow in the dark because this unit comes with headlights. This unit is self-propelled riding on eight inch wheels in the front and 10 inch wheels on the back. The rear wheels are two and three quarter inches wide for added traction. The speed of the self-propel can be adjusted at the touch of a dial. Here on the bagger, PowerSmart states that the grass bag capacity 
is 18 and a half gallons. There's a single lever height adjustment on this model and it raises the mower from 1.18 inches all the way up to three inches. The unit can also be folded up and stored just like this, saving you space. And to top this all off, on top of the mower deck, you'll find a washout port for easier cleaning. To start this bad boy up, you're gonna push this button down and then the lever down. And away it goes. And to make this mower drive with the self-propel, you're gonna start the mower up like you normally would and then push this lever down and away you go. Check out those bad boys spinning. Stops on the dime as soon as you let it go. Well, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go mow some grass with this monster mower. So while you're watching me mow my lawn, know this. I wanted to push this mower. I wanted to give it a good workout so we could test its limits. It has rained for a straight week here. The lawn is finally drying up and the lawn is long. But don't worry about my lawn, it can take it. It'll bounce back in a week. This will be a great test for this mower as many owners will have to mow that occasional long lawn. I wanted to see what it could do under difficult conditions. So here's what I like about this budget wide deck mower. The wider deck is a nice concept to reduce mowing times. This deck is only five inches wider than a standard deck. It's a game of inches. My old Time Master reduced the time about 10 to 15 minutes, but that was a 30 inch deck. So hypothetically, this mower would reduce my usual 10,000 square foot mowing time from about one hour to 52 to 55 minutes. This mower is also lightweight for its size, which makes doing maintenance a little bit easier. Flipping it up, scraping the deck can all get done a little quicker. When this mower hit long turf along its path, it shifted into this turbo mode. You can hear the mower wind up a little extra to cut through the tough stuff. Pretty interesting how this mower senses a load and generates more power to get the job done. As you might've seen earlier, this twin blade design has a gap in the middle. And I was a little concerned that it would leave mohawks right down the center of my pass. I'm happy to report that is not the case, not a single mohawk in sight. This model felt like it had better traction versus the previous 21 inch model because of these wide tires on the back, which is also a plus. Lastly, the way you mow most efficiently with this three in one beast is with a side discharge. It didn't really bog down much that way and was able to just keep going. Now this segues nicely into what grinds my gears with this Power Smart. The side discharge, although it didn't bog down, it left a huge mess of clippings all over the yard. Granted, this was expected because the lawn was long, but clippings only appeared to be cut once and then shot out. If you're using the side discharge on this model and you're only mowing once a week, you will need a rake. The side discharge on this model is going to be used best when you're mowing your lawn just about every three to four days. Now you may be thinking, what about mulching? Mulching is pretty terrible to say the least, even when you're using the slowest speed setting. Even while mowing less of a cut with the mower hanging over onto the sidewalk, it still dumped clippings onto the lawn in many, many piles. This mower does not mulch clippings up really well up inside the deck. It's very much a one trick pony and a chop and drop. Now I thought mowing with the bag on the back would help this mower out a little bit, but bagging only seemed to be par at best. I noticed with just about every single pass that clippings seem to miss the mower bag, go underneath the deck, and were left on the lawn. It only managed to suck up about 85% of everything that it cut. Now let's shift gears and talk about the wheels. Once you engage this drive lever, the rear wheels are constantly spinning. And when these rear wheels constantly spin, they tear your lawn up a little bit. After you make a pass, the only way to disengage the wheels is to let go of both levers, shut the mower down, make your turn, and then re-engage with both levers and go again. That gets pretty annoying when you have to do that tens of hundreds of times every single time you mow. And it would be a nice feature on this model to have the wheels disengage once you let go of this lever. That way you could safely make your turn under control. And then once you realign your path, you press it again and then it would go. I did try lifting the mower up like this in order to make the pass, but that led to another weak point which was the handlebars. This lock popped free a couple of times as I was trying to fight the mower to make some turns. And just like on the 21 inch model, these handlebars have a lot of play in them, which makes the whole unit feel less sturdy. Your hands are also trapped in these spots right here so you can man the controls. This isn't really comfortable when you're trying to make a turn and you have to keep that blade engaged the entire time. And lastly, some might be wondering how long can this mower actually mow the long four. This machine shut down after approximately 32 minutes of use, mowing only about 4,000 to 5,000 square feet of my property. And that's it. Any bars? It looks like a faint bar. I can barely see it, so I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but she's done. She's cooked. So this is that battery dilemma that we run into. Half the yard's mowed, 
Half the yard's not. Half the yard is mowed. Half the yard is not. Now we get to play the 90 minute weight game. At that point, the battery was completely dead. I brought it back in to charge for about an hour on the charging dock. I got the battery back up to about three quarters and then finished up the lawn. So who is this mower built for? Well, if your lawn is approximately 5,000 square feet or less, boom, this mower is for you. Any bigger and you're pushing that battery to its brink, especially if the lawn is long. If you have straight paths and a flat yard, that is also a plus. If you're not a fan of doing oil changes at least once a season, this mower could be good for you as well. If you have other 80 volt items in the PowerSmart line, then you could perhaps bounce this battery between a few machines. And if you're not interested in the perfect cut, but you're looking for a mower that's a little wider to get the job done a little quicker, then this mower could be for you. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.